we're going to read about the expression of attainment, Aries 16 to 20, that five degree batch of individual Sabian degrees through which Jupiter is going right now. The deep mystical awareness of essence can bring on the need for seclusion as a way to deepen self-knowledge. And we learn that by tuning into natural rhythms, we can train ourselves how to release the grasping mind so to access the mystery of being innocent and fearless in love. So we can see the five degrees of this expression of attainment individually studied in this paragraph. The deep mystical awareness of essence, the brownies dancing, and so on. And this is what Nikki is going to focus on particularly in, in this presentation. She's bringing the awareness that we have of each individual degree as some planet goes through it, in this case Jupiter. And we're going to link that particularity of wisdom to a more general sense of the batch. When we study the particular zodiac degrees, it's not enough just to say Aries is this, that and the other. It's just simply not subtle enough. Within Aries, there are whirls and eddies of shifts and movements like a river. Within all the zodiac signs, we have that. And so what we're looking at, particularly in, in Nikki's uh, study of it, is how each movement forward can be better understood if you look at the whole. And this particular um, emblem at, at the moment seems to be to do with weaving. She's picked up on that quite well. So that's the expression of attainment. Now, um, Rudyard has looked at the particular degrees in a different way from Jones. So I'm going to read The Magic Carpet, 19th degree of Aries. The magic carpet of oriental imagery. The keynote is the use of creative imagination. A way of life refusing a hectic involvement in social competition and waste producing overproduction allows for the development of unattached and transcendent understanding. The static floor, carpet, on which man's feet, the symbols of understanding, rest, can become transformed into the means for great flights of imagination and superphysical perception. The period of rest from outwardly directed activity bound to collective normality presents the creative mind with the possibility of surveying in dreams the totality of the present-day social situation, thus to see the whole. A strife transcending an unattached outlook upon everyday reality, the magic carpet. Jupiter has been moving so fast through Aries. We are already at the 19th degree of Aries, the magic carpet. And Jupiter has been moving so fast that we're actually going to cover two degrees today. Aries 19, the magic carpet, and Aries 20, a young girl feeding birds in winter. So you might remember that we talked about how Rudyar classified all the Sabian symbols into a sort of ritual drama, that drama beginning in scene one, Desire, which was um, the first three expressions of Aries, the first half of Aries. Then we made it into the second half of Aries, um, the second scene of the drama of the Sabian symbols that Rudyar calls potency. And so 
Potency starts off with this first expression that's taking place at the actional level, attainment. And what have we attained here? So the expression started with Aries 16, brownies dancing in the setting sun. Then we went into Aries 17, two prim spinsters. Then we went into Aries 18, an empty hammock. Okay, let's see how these all fit together. With Aries 16, brownies dancing in the setting sun. That's talking about the potency of nature. And I see that dancing, it's the dancing that brings everything into existence. And I see that as sort of this ecstatic practice to achieve attainment, this kind of spiritual attainment is what we're talking about here. Um, and then you go into Aries 17, two prim spinsters. Now we're seeing sort of um, choosing seclusion, choosing to not participate, to take on a sort of monastic lifestyle. So these are the two spiritual practices. And you might remember I brought up how the Buddha talks about how to neither be too focused on ecstasy and desire nor to be too focused on um, limiting desire, limiting ecstasy, that sort of um, ascetic practice, um, instead to pursue a middle path. Um, and this I saw as the empty hammock where it's, in ha it's a hammock which can be used for relaxation, though it is empty. So it shows the person is out there acting somewhere. And this um, is kind of a weaving together of these two types of spiritual practices. The hammock itself, you can see, is a woven fabric, though loosely woven. And you can see with the magic carpet, we have a carpet that is now tightly woven. And this process, this motif of fabric started all the way back at the end of the last scene. Aries 15, an Indian weaving a blanket. And with that, we talked about weaving a blanket that's weaving the infinite into the finite. And that was what was going to give us the potency that would lead to the potency that we are now receiving. And um, in the magic carpet, it first starts out as a mundane carpet that we've woven. And this I see as us developing a committed spiritual practice using this middle path approach. And this takes time um, the first phase is the hammock phase, the loosely woven fabric, and this can be when a lot of people give up because you've already put a lot of work in and you still haven't seen those results, but with the magic carpet, enough spiritual practice has occurred to train the mind to let go of grasping, to train the mind to just sit in a, in a way where it's detached. And that allows for the concentration that now the spirit is entering into the carpet and the magic, the flying is occurring. And um, of course, you can also see this as any carpet is a magic carpet if we are meditating on it. And in that meditation, we are being transported into different realms of existence. And um, let me go ahead and read from the Sabian Alchemy book to see what it has to say about the magic carpet. Rising above ordinary perception. 
A way of life refusing hectic involvement in social competition and wasteful overproduction allows for development of unattached, transcendent understanding. When in repose, the creative mind can better survey our present situation. And then stuck routine can be transformed into a new holistic perception. So you can see here that in Aries 16, Brownies Dancing in the Setting Sun, and Aries 17, Two Prim Spinsters, while these two degrees contrast, they're both um, a refusal of the day-to-day -day life of working at a job, doing what society wants you to do, being in this social competition. And instead, these are practices that are leading to being unattached, having transcendent understanding, and that's going to lead to a lot of aha moments. So what Jupiter is really going to help us with at this time are those aha moments of like, wow, I've been working, I've been working, I've been working. None of this seems to be leading anywhere. And then all of a sudden, that rising up of the magic carpet can take place. And this might remind you of all the way back in um, Aries 5, um, Triangle with Wings. That was the first time in Aries, in this zodiac journey, that we experienced that rising up of that kind of like um, things being greater than the sum of its parts. So there's still, um, we've gone past the point where that rising up is simply what we're looking for because we've developed a way to, to get that happening at more of a regular basis that's helping us, we're solving more of our problems using that, and we're more aligned with spirit because of that. And so now we're moving to a next step where we're kind of taking a sort of level of responsibility in our relationship with spirit, and that moves us to Aries degree 20, a young girl feeding birds in winter, where we're now um, not only just trying to establish contact with spirit, but we're working in um, furthering the goals of spirit to create mutual flourishing on earth. And um, going back to Aries 16, Brownies Dancing in the Setting Sun, you see the natural potency. It's buzzing in everything, but there are these natural cycles of growth and decay, of birth and death. And a young girl feeding birds in winter, winter being a time of death, um, the birds being a creature who could possibly um, die in winter if they're not able to migrate, and the young girl um, still young and so open to this world is with that innocence um, doing all she can to keep these birds alive. And that's sort of like how we must approach this kind of um, new role we're coming into where now um, we have the opportunity to help the spirit further and grow. And for whatever reason, spirit really wants to come to this earth and expand and grow and 
by helping it, we expand our own consciousness. It's again kind of um, the infinite and the finite connecting and this kind of like magic that comes from doing that that just seems to be connected to like why we're all here is that sort of expansion and mutual flourishing that the spirit really wants to grow around and um yeah i think that we see that that's really what we're trying to do with attainment and let me read now from the sabian alchemy book a young girl feeding birds in winter, seeing life as a constant opportunity to experience love. Nature is harsh. People and animals suffer and starve, and they die. Yet, without harshness, compassion could not exist. There would be no place for it. There is no higher purpose than to live life as a constant expression of compassionate love. This is neither fanciful nor sentimental love. It is feeding the hungry stranger. Aries 20, a young girl feeding birds in winter, Dane Rudyard. The keynote, overcoming crises through compassion. Nature's seasonal rhythms imply an oscillation between living and dying. Through creative imagination, man can fly over the cycle and discover means not only to escape from the fatality of seasonal decay or deprivation, but to assist other living entities to survive through crises. Migrating birds fly south. This is like Aries 12, the geese. But by establishing a partnership with other creatures unable to escape wintry deprivation or death, man can maintain the life of the spirit, symbolized by the birds, steady through all crises, if, like a young girl, he is widely open to the promptings, promptings of love and sympathy. The theme is the transmutation of life into love. So you see that you start out developing a spiritual practice, and it's almost, almost selfish in a sense, where you're trying to make yourself more aligned with spirit with spirituality you're trying to really have self-actualization but what we're seeing here in attainment is that once you've developed a certain level of self-actualization then you immediately now your job becomes helping helping other people receive that uh, helping other people who just need to get by and it's not um, it's not fanciful or sentimental it's just um, what has to be done is just the flow of life and this is what true potency is we're seeing now it's not being able to help yourself but to be able to help spirit expand through every physical body that it's occupying and um i think for jupiter to be in this place this must be a really great spot for jupiter the planet of expansion getting to help things expand and you can see this in your own personal projects as seeing that the project that you're trying to bring to this world how does it how do other people's projects um, help your project and how do you help theirs how how are you a node in a system that can all grow and flourish together and how can you do your part when other people are struggling in like their winter period and then other people might help you in your winter period and it's because you had that aha moment in the magic carpet. 
that now you have this like extra generator to help others. You have extra resources maybe, or you have extra, um, you've gone a certain point and you can look to others who haven't gone as far as you and help them along. And um, it's kind of interesting because now the sun has entered Aries and um, Jupiter, who has been in Aries since December, can kind of play that role of helping the sun along, of being like, I was just where you are now. These are the things that I learned along the way. And so that's kind of like a nice point for Jupiter to be in because a lot of other crazy things are happening. Um, a lot of things are ending and new things are beginning. Um, Pluto just moved into Aquarius earlier. Saturn moved into Pisces. So there's a lot of things um, being shaken up at this very beginning of the new zodiac year. So it's really nice to have Jupiter having, you know, done like a little bit of um, leg work to help us know like, okay, we're at a point where we can really emerge and just looking back and how we already through Jupiter been working on that emergence. And um, yeah, because the sun is going to be um, conjunct with Jupiter on April 11th. And then the sun is going to move ahead of Jupiter after that. We're happy that it got to spend a little time with Jupiter to get it, um, get that little bit of enthusiasm going as uh, we send it on its way. Okay, well, um, that's the end of attainment. I hope you um, attained some cool things along the way.